Hey Dogwood students, welcome back to DSM Online. I hope all of you are doing well, settling in with school. Uh, I know I have enjoyed recently getting to see a lot of you guys at our outside life group event. Uh, I wanna let you guys know we have an awesome service coming up, so stay tuned for some great worship and awesome talk, and make sure to stick around for the end. We've got some big, important announcements. Thanks. Stirring in your 
sons and daughters Earth revealing heaven's wonders Spirit come, Spirit come What you spoke is now unfolding All your children shall be holy Dreams awaken in this moment Spirit come, Spirit come Pour it out, let your love run Let your glory fill this house, pour it out, let your love run over, here and now, let your glory fill this house, now the world awaits your presence. This power is within us We will rise to see your image Spirit come, Spirit come Pour it out, let your love run Testifying of the sun, one desire Spirit come, Spirit come, speak revival Prophesy like it is done Hey students, I'm Mark Smith, one of the student ministers here at DSM. Hope life is good for you guys. I hope school is going okay, though I know things are really different. Hang in there. I wanna to talk to you today about fear, worry, anxiety. Like what scares you? Is it the boogeyman? Shadows and strange noises in your room at night? You know, I can still remember being a kid and I always felt safer under a lot of covers. Is, is that still a thing? Are covers still the magic that saves? What are you afraid of? Spiders crawling up your back, over your ear. Ugh. Heights, don't look down. Enclosed spaces, I, I can't breathe in here. That's mine, I can't stand being in tight spaces. Two weeks ago, Nathan talked about FOMO, the fear of missing out. Are you afraid of that? Especially now when everything is different? 
What about DSM? It might be your first year ever or your last year ever and you feel like it's getting all messed up. What are you gonna miss out on? But what truly terrifies you? Like, are, are my parents okay because they keep fighting? Will my grandparents be okay? I'm worried about their health. I'm mortified of being made fun of. The idea of driving on my own horrifies me. The thought of not being good enough in the classroom or on the field or on the stage petrifies me. I'm so scared. You know, adults deal with fears too. I gotta tell you, very often in my adult life, when I'm anxious about something in real life, I have this same dream, this nightmare really, and it's recurring. In my dream, I'm still in college, I'm at Georgia Tech, and it's the end of the semester or the end of the year, it's time for final exams, and when it's time to start studying for exams, I realize something and I begin to panic. I realize that I've totally forgotten about a class, a whole class. Forgotten about a class, you say, I mean, how is that even possible? Well, in college, often, usually nobody takes attendance and for sure, nobody makes you go to class. Sounds awesome, you might be thinking. Yeah, I mean, sure, in the short term, but if you don't go to class, you don't do well. And if you don't do well, you fail. And if you fail, you end up wasting your money or your parents' money and you end up having to take the class again or else you can't graduate. So here I am in my dream at the end and, I, and I've forgotten completely about the class, which means not only have I not attended along the way, but I've also not learned or studied anything on my own. I've also not turned anything in and I've also not taken any tests. So my current grade in the class is a big fat zero and it's finals time. So I am going to fail this class. That's my nightmare. For you, it might be like showing up to a math class on just a regular old day, strolling into the classroom and realizing that everybody was early and prepared and they're watching the teacher pass out the test that you forgot all about. That feeling, right? Or showing up to the band competition, having not learned the music or the steps at all. You don't know what you're doing. Or the dance recital, having never seen, even seen the routine before. What would that feel like? Guys, no lie. I would not stand up here and lie to you right now. I would tell you stories sometimes, but I would not stand up here and lie to you. I, I had this very dream, that recurring nightmare I just talked about this week on Tuesday night. I promise. It just happened. And usually when I have this dream, it means that I'm stressed out about something real, something in real life. I'm not sure what it was this time, but to be honest, it very well might've been preparing for this talk right here because I was behind this week. Whatever it is, I must be stressed out about something. Guys, anxiety is real and it's real for us older people too. What I wanna do now uh, is I wanna walk us through four steps that will help us work through our anxiety and our fears in this very real world in which we live. So here we go, number one, number one, you need to realize that having fears is normal. There are some 365 references in the Bible to fear. That's one for every single day of the year, guys. It would seem to me then that fear has been around for a really long time and that a lot of people experience it. Have you heard the 23rd Psalm written by the famous leader of Israel, King David? He wrote, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Even King David felt deep fear. He often feared for his life. To, to be afraid does not make you weird. It does not mean that you are weak and it does not mean you're alone. In fact, instead, it means that you are just like me and you're just like the rest of us. So number two, after you realize that to fear is to be normal, then number two is you name your fear. Acknowledge it. There's power in giving it a name and, and recognizing it. It's no longer hidden. It's not overlooked. It is identified as a clear adversary or enemy. And it's easier to talk to others about it. So you bring it into the light where it can be dealt with. <clears throat> In Exodus chapters three and four, God is calling Moses to lead his people out of slavery in Egypt. And Moses, the great Moses, maybe the greatest leader of God's people in the Old Testament, the Moses was so uncertain and so not 
confident. Go read the story sometime, Exodus chapters three and four. When you read, you're like, come on, Moses. God keeps reassuring him over and over that he can do it even with supernatural displays of power. And then Moses gets to his last excuse. He says, God, but I am not a gifted speaker. Don't send me. Find somebody else. So God gives him a solution even for that. And actually Moses still doesn't wanna go. So God basically shoves him out the door and says, you're going, man, you're going. What I love though is that Moses, you know, instead of, instead of beating around the bush, get it? Moses beating around the bush, Boom. dad joke, burning bush. You, you'll get it later. But what I love is that Moses, instead of beating around the bush, Moses, he, he names his fears to God. He just, just lays them out there. He says, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of this. No, I'm afraid of this. Like Moses, we need to name it. Then name it before God, which leads us to our next step for overcoming fears. Number three, that is you give your fears to God. Give them to God. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You see, your Lord, who is like a warrior, students, will protect you. How though do, do we give our fear over to God? What, what does that look like? Well, you, you pray, you, you talk to God, you tell God about it, daily, hourly even. You might literally hold your hands up and ask Him to take it if that helps. You might write to God in a journal and ask him to take it that way. You might walk out to the woods and loudly ask him to take it. You might hide, hide under your covers and your pillow and cry and ask him to take it. God wants you to tell him about it. He wants to know, but he wants you to say it to him and God will take it on, head on. Ask others to pray for you and with you, pray. Pray and read scripture. The Bible is full of people expressing their fears to God. Use their words, memorize scripture so that you can use its words. Number four, finally, in order to overcome fears, we choose faith in place of fear. We choose faith. Choose faith and walk on. John 16, says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Guys, we are not promised an easy life. Jesus actually assures us that we will have trouble. Yet in the midst of the trouble, there is peace. There can be faith that God's got our back, that all will work out in the end, that eventually, that eventually things are going to be okay. Mark is going to be okay. Now, God may not necessarily fix all of our troubles right now, but faith is based on the fact that through his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus conquered all the bad things in the world. And that we will be 100% better and then some when we get to be with God again forever. So things will be better at the end with God and God might make things better even now if he so chooses in his infinite wisdom. So choosing faith means to lift our heads and to put our hope in God who is in control, even if we can't see it yet. One of my heroes in this world and all the world is my youth pastor. He was my youth pastor growing up. He experienced a lot of suffering in his life, capped off by his wife being diagnosed with a brain tumor many years ago. She beat it the first time, but it came back with a vengeance and she ended up very sadly passing away. Neither she nor my youth pastor deserved any of that in my view. They were two of the greatest people I've ever known but I watched my youth pastor grieve. His fear of losing his wife and being alone became reality. But he knew it was normal to be afraid. He got help and he talked to others about it. He named it. He even wrote a book about it. He prayed through it and with great emotion talked to God about it and he gave it over to God. And finally, he chose faith. He's still in the ministry. He didn't quit. Years later, he remarried a wonderful woman of God, even though he never pretends like he wasn't hurt in those days. The book he wrote is called Grieve, but not without hope. He still looks ahead to the end of all things when God puts it all back together. You see, we will live on forever, but fear itself will be dead once and for all. That's what Jesus accomplished. 
Students, you can do what my youth pastor did too. I know you're afraid sometimes, but you're not alone in your fear. You're just like the rest of us. So realize you're normal. Name your fears, give them to God and keep the faith. You can do it. Love you guys.
Thanks, Zach and Ben. Thanks, Mark, for our awesome talk. Uh, before we get into our announcements, I want to let you guys know that we actually made a new hire on the DSM team. Her name is Kate Moore. She's going to be interning with us for the rest of this year. So I want to let you know if you see her, say hey. Um, and actually, here's Kate to tell you a little bit more about herself. Hey, DSM students. My name is Kate, if we haven't met yet. And I am so excited to say that I am the new youth intern. I'm so excited to get to hang out with you guys. Some fun facts about me. I just graduated from Barry College, Book and Bites. Um, I will eat my body weight in ice cream if I am given the chance. And there was a year of my life where I lived right outside of Seattle, Washington. So next time you see me and we haven't met yet, please come say hi. I would love to meet you and I would love to hang out with you. And I'm really excited to get to hang out with you and grow with you guys. Thanks for introducing yourself, Kay. I hope you guys get to meet her as soon as possible. So thanks for tuning in to DSM Online. I want to throw a few announcements at you real quick. So if you guys are ready, tonight we have our life groups. Middle school is going to be at 6 o'clock. High school is going to be at 7 o'clock. We have two options for that. You can be online over Zoom or you could be on Dogwood's campus, socially distanced outside. Um, next but not least, we've got breakout Wednesday at seven o'clock on Zoom. And then lastly, I want to let you guys know next week there will be no DSM online because we will be doing a worship together weekend. I love you guys. I can't wait to see you.